Develop data visualization interfaces in Python with Dash. In the past, creating analytical web applications was a task for seasoned developers that required knowledge of multiple programming languages and frameworks. That's no longer the case. Nowadays, you can make data visualization interfaces using pure Python. One popular tool for this is Dash. Dash gives data scientists the ability to showcase their results in interactive web applications. You don't need to be an expert in web development. And in an afternoon, you can build and deploy a Dash app to share with others. In this course, you'll learn how to create a Dash application, use Dash core components and HTML components, customize the style of your Dash application, use callbacks to build interactive applications, and deploy your application on Heroku. So now that you know what you're covering, let's get started. What is Dash? Dash is an open source framework for building data visualization interfaces. Released in 2017 as a Python library, it's grown to include implementations for R and Julia. Dash helps data scientists build analytical web applications without requiring advanced web development knowledge. Three technologies constitute the core of Dash. Flask supplies the web server functionality. React.js renders the user interface of the web page. And Plotly.js generates the charts used in your application. But you don't have to worry about making all these technologies work together. Dash will do that for you. You just need to write Python, R or Julia and sprinkle it with a bit of CSS. Plotly, a Canada-based company, built Dash and supports its development. You may know the company from the popular graphing libraries that share its name. Plotly, the company, open-sourced Dash and released it under an MIT license so you can use Dash at no cost. Plotly also offers a commercial companion to Dash called Dash Enterprise. This paid service provides companies with support services such as hosting, deployment and handling authentication on Dash applications. But these features live outside of Dash's open source ecosystem and we won't be covering them. As the name implies, Dash will help you to build dashboards quickly. If you're used to analysing data or building data visualisations using Python, then Dash will be a useful addition to your toolbox. Here are a few examples of what you can make with Dash. Here you can see a dashboard to analyse trading positions in real time. This is a visualisation of millions of Uber rides. And here you can see an interactive financial report. This is just a small sample. If you'd like to see other interesting use cases, then go and check the Dash app gallery. It's important to point out that you don't need advanced knowledge of web development to follow this course, but some familiarity with HTML and CSS won't hurt. The rest of this course assumes you know the basics of the following topics. Python graphing libraries such as Plotly, Bokeh or Matplotlib. HTML and the structure of an HTML file, and CSS and style sheets. With that introduction to Dash and the prerequisites out of the way, in the next section you'll see how to get started with Dash in Python. Getting started with Dash in Python. In this video course, you'll go through the end to end process of building a dashboard using Dash. If you follow along with the examples, then you'll go from a bare bones dashboard on your local machine to a styled dashboard deployed on Heroku. To build the dashboard, you'll use a data set of sales and prices of avocados in the United States between 2015 and 2018. This data set was compiled by Justin Kiggins using data from the Haas Avocado Board. To develop your app, you'll need a new directory to store your code and data and a clean Python 3 virtual environment. If you want to know more about virtual environments, check out this real Python course. If you're using Windows, then open a command prompt and execute these commands. 
The first command creates a directory for your project and moves your current location there. The second command creates a virtual environment in that location and the last command activates the virtual environment. If you're using macOS or Linux, then here are the commands you'll need to get set up. Note that there are small but important differences between how you set up a virtual environment on Windows and how you do it on other operating systems. Whichever system you do use regularly, it's a good idea to use a different system occasionally to reinforce your learning and make sure you understand fully what's going on under the hood. Next, regardless of which platform you're using, you'll need to install the required libraries. You can do that using pip inside your virtual environment. Here you can see the command needed to install Dash and Pandas. Note that we've pinned specific versions of these packages to make sure that you have the same environment as the one used throughout this course. In addition to Dash, Pandas will help you handle reading and wrangling the data that you'll use in your app. Finally, you'll need some data to feed into your dashboard. You can download the data as well as the code as part of the course materials. Save the data as avocado.csv in the root directory of the project. By now, you should have a virtual environment with the required libraries and the data in the root folder of your project. Your project structure should look like this. Once it does, you're good to go. And next, you'll build your first Dash application. Building your first Dash application. For development purposes, it's useful to think of the process of building a Dash application in two steps. Firstly, define the looks of your application using the app's layout. Secondly, use callbacks to determine which parts of your app are interactive and what they react to. Create an empty file named app.py in the root directory of your project and then open it up in the editor of your choice. Here you can see the first few lines of app.py being entered. In the first section of the code, you import required libraries and modules, Dash, DCC, which is part of Dash, HTML, which is also part of Dash, and Pandas, which is imported with the traditional alias of PD. Each of these provides a building block for your application. Dash is used to initialize your application. DCC allows you to create interactive components such as graphs, dropdowns, and date ranges. HTML lets you access HTML tags. And Pandas helps you read and organize the data. In the next section of the code, you read the data and pre-process it for use in the dashboard. You filter some of the data because the current version of your dashboard isn't interactive and the plotted values wouldn't make sense otherwise. In the last line seen on screen, you create an instance of the Dash class. If you've used Flask before, then initializing a Dash class may look familiar. In Flask, you usually initialize a WSGI application using Flask double underscore name. Similarly, for a Dash app, you use Dash double underscore name as seen on screen. Next, you'll define the layout property of your application. This property dictates the look of your app. In this case, you'll use a heading with a description below it and two graphs. On screen, you can see the code that defines it.
This code defines the layout property of the app object. This property determines the looks of your application using a tree structure made of dash components. You'll see two sets of components in almost every app. Dash HTML components provides you with Python wrappers for HTML elements. For example, you could use this library to create elements such as paragraphs, headings, or lists. Dash Core Components provides you with Python abstractions for creating interactive user interfaces. You can use it to create interactive elements such as graphs, sliders, or dropdowns. On lines 15 to 22, you can see the Dash HTML components in practice. You start by defining the parent component, an HTML.div. Then you add two more elements, a heading, HTML.h1, and a paragraph, HTML.p, as its children. These components are equivalent to the div, h1, and p HTML tags. You can use the component's arguments to modify attributes or the content of the tags. For example, to specify what goes inside the div tag, you use the children argument in HTML.div. There are also other arguments in the components such as style, class name or ID that refer to attributes of the HTML tags. You'll see how to use some of these properties to style your dashboard in the next section. The part of the layout shown on lines 15 to 22 is transformed into the HTML code that you see on screen. This HTML code is rendered when you open your application in the browser. It follows the same structure as your Python code, with a div tag containing an h1 and a p element. On lines 23 to 26 in the layout code snippet, you can see the graph component from dash core components in practice. There are two dcc.graph components in the app layout. The first one plots the average prices of avocados during the period of study, and the second plots the number of avocados sold in the United States during the same period. Under the hood, Dash uses plotly.js to generate graphs. The dcc.graph components expect a figure object or a Python dictionary containing the plot's data and layout. In this case, you're providing the latter. Finally, these last two lines of code run the application. These lines make it possible to run the Dash application locally using Flask's built-in server. The debug equals true parameter from app.runServer enables the hot reloading option in your application. This means that when you make a change to your app, it reloads automatically without you needing to restart the server. The full code for the application is included in the course files, but it's always a good idea to enter the code yourself. It will help with understanding what's going on inside the code and also remembering the syntax. It will also help when you come to create your own project from scratch, which after all is the main idea of this course. Now it's time to run your application. Open a terminal inside your project's root directory and in the project's virtual environment. Run Python app.py and then go to localhost 8050 using your preferred browser as seen on screen. Your dashboard should look like this. The good news is you've created a working version of the dashboard. The not so good news is there's still some work to do before you can show this to others. The dashboard is far from visually pleasing and you still need to add some interactivity to it. If you want to stop the app running, press Ctrl C in the terminal window and it should shut down. In the next section of the course, you'll see how to style your Dash application, starting with applying a custom style.